Whew, okay. I like it when we start a new section and a new song kicks in. I always think that's kind of beautiful. So we're at the threshold of brilliance. These are not fucking games anymore, my friends. These are art. This is some real ass shit, and I know I say this every, but like literally, everything we just talked about, toss it in the garbage, nothing compared to what's coming. Okay. At number 50, we're gonna drop Cuphead. Um, brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant. Amazing gameplay. Maybe the best art, the strongest art style out of any game on this list. But um, if the platform sections worked better in Cuphead, I think I could nearly push it higher. But it's hard not to... It's hard not to think about, like, how frustrating those sections are and how good... Like, compared to how good the rest of the game is. Um, yeah, I have, I have, like, a video on Cuphead that you could watch. But it's... It's... It's a fucking cool game, but I think this is as far as it goes. Next. I think the next game I gotta cut, and this really hurts, but I think it's Beautiful Joe. Um, again, another game with just such an incredible amount of style. So much fun to play. There's so much shit to love about this game. But, yeah, I think, I think this... This is kind of as far as it goes. Um, it's fucking brilliant, but yeah, it, it's a shame. It's never, I don't think it's ever been re-released on anything except the PlayStation 2 compared to the original GameCube. Maybe they were actually released at the same time. I don't remember. But um, some of the best boss battles, some of the most interesting gameplay mechanics. I love that game, but yeah, I think I gotta leave it here. Henshin gone, gone, baby. I think next, this is going to be unpopular as well. The next one is going to be Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I adore that game. I love it. I think it's brilliant. It has some of my favorite boss battles of all time. The battle with the senator at the end, just, just incredible. I think there's things about the gameplay I don't love. I don't think it's Platinum's strongest game. The soundtrack is amazing. I don't disagree with anyone in the chat saying it's a masterpiece. I love it, but I think when you compare it to just everything else on here for me it just doesn't hold up and I, th I feel good about it being there it's hard but yeah oh no oh no I think I know what's coming next oh no oh this is gonna be bad okay guys I think the next game I'm going to cut is Chrono Trigger okay look Look, here it is. There is no way I'm ever going to make the argument that Cro that Secret of Mana is a better game than Chrono Trigger. It just flat out isn't. Story-wise, character-wise, it's just not. Gameplay-wise, Chrono Trigger beats the shit out of Secret of Mana. I love Chrono Trigger. <sighs> there is an X factor to just the atmosphere of fe and feeling of Secret of Mana. And like, it's related to a lot of really personal shit with me. And I'll get into it when we cut Secret of Mana, but like, for me, Chrono Trigger is a really excellent game, but I also just do not, I've never had quite the reverence for it, a lot of people do. I think it's a really, 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 like, you could take everything I said about Dragon, mm, no, that's not true. Chrono Trigger does do some amazing shit with their main character, with time travel, with like, it's got a killer soundtrack, it has beautiful character designs by Toriyama. I love Chrono Trigger, just not as much as I love 46 other games. But yeah, there it goes. Listen, 47 is... It's it's good, okay? Um, someone asking what this song is. This is Marks of Despair from Off, Off Dream. And there's like a cross through the O. I'm not ready to cut 3D World. I think that's maybe the best 3D Mario game. But man, maybe I'm not that far off either. Oh! There's a Jeff just had an uh, interesting suggestion. There's a Jeff just suggested the Resident Evil 2 remake. Hmm. Hmm. 
Where should the Resident Evil 2 remake go? That's an interesting question, I think. I mean, is the Resident Evil 2 remake as good as Chrono Trigger? No, I don't think so. Is it as good as Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? Mm, Beautiful Joe, Cuphead, Earthbound, Bloodborne, Gunstar Heroes, Phoenix Wright, Binding of Isaac, Pokemon Soul Silver, Disgaea, Yume Nikki, Doki Doki Literature Club, Rampa 2, any of those games? No, no, I don't think so. Guilty Gear Xrd, Revelator, Fallout New Vegas, FTL, Deadly Premonition. Oh shit, we're at, we're at the bottom of the... We're at the bottom of the top 100. I guess the Resident Evil 2 remake didn't make the top 100. That sucks, but surely, surely we can find a place for it in the Shadow Realm. Surely. Right? Right? Is it as good as Let It Die, South Park Stick of Truth, Joe and Max, Super Double Dragon, Tiny Toons Adventures? Is Resident Evil 2 Remake as good as Tiny Toon Adventures? I don't think it is. I don't think it is as good as Tiny Toons Adventures. Delta Ruin, No More Heroes, Muramasa and the Demon Blade, Simon the Sorcerer 2, Dragon Ball Z, Choo Choo Rocket, WrestleMania 2000, Buster Move, Sunset Riders, Silent Hill 3, Evo Search for Eden, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Into the Bree... Yeah, no, it's not as good as Castlevania Symphony of the Night. People were freaking out when I could Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's better than Resident Evil 2 Remake. Just saying. Just saying. Wario Land, Thumper, Metal Slug 3, Day of the Kentacle, GoldenEye, Anodyne, Tekken Tag Tournament, River City Girls, Select. I don't think so. Lilat Wars, Harvest Moon, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, Shadow of the Colossus, King of Fighters, Celeste, Dark Chronicle, SSX Tricky, Silent Hill, Shadow Memories, World of Horror, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Shenmue 1. Is it better than Shenmue 1? Nah, nah, it's not. Soul Reaver, Near Automata. Oh. What? What's this? We're, we're at the bottom of the Shadow Realm? But wait, what's this? What's this? The Dead Zone? Does the Resident Evil 2 remake belong in the Dead Zone? No. No, that's impossible. That's impossible. I mean, it's not like the Resident Evil 2 remake took Resident Evil and made it a fucking action movie. So what's so what's better than Chrono Trigger? <laughs> I mean, guys, if you want to talk about Resident Evil Six, I hear people saying like, "No, Resident Evil Six did that." Do you guys really want to talk about Resident Evil Six? Because I can talk about Resident Evil Six. I can talk about a game that has three good hours at the start and nothing else. <laughs> okay, okay, you know what? I'm actually second guessing myself. I think I am going to cut Super Mario 3D World. Um, a lot of people don't like this game. I've seen a lot of people say they think it's like the second worst 3D Mario game. I think that's insane. I think the level of creativity in that game is fucking beautiful. I think it does so much with like how it works its levels. Every level feels new and interesting. Every one of them is like really, it's, it's just like, feels like it's this its own unique fucking beautiful thing and I think it's an incredible game. I love it. I like it better than Galaxy. I like it better than Galaxy 2. I love me and Michelle played through a ton of it and just had a like great time. I think it's like a meticulous video game. I can't, there's nothing bad I can say about it. I don't think there's anything bad about that game. I just I adore it. I think it looks beautiful and I can't wait to buy it again. Okay. Next. Okay. I think at this point, I can get rid of Super Metroid. Um, I'm guessing this is also going to be a very unpopular choice. But look, I love this game. I, I think it's fucking brilliant. It has this feeling of just really intense, like just loneliness and being alone on an alien planet. And I think it was one of the first games to ever really nail that feeling. And it's beautiful and the music's incredible and like the way it all unfolds and play out. It is the blueprint of so much shit that came after it. And I, I love it. But I think it's so difficult for me to push it past any other game on this list. Like 
Because, like, I played through it once, and it took, like, you know, eight hours, and that was it. Uh, <laughs> will I stream all these games maybe in, like, a hundred years? Um, but... Uh, yeah, I can't... It's hard to justify it, but it's kind of what I feel at this point. Incredible game. It is incre... It's just your terrible list. <laughs> oh. Otter Slinger has a really interesting question, chat. Where's Psychonauts? Where's Psychonauts on this list? I said I wouldn't dead zone it. I don't remember saying that. But no, no, you know what? I like Psychonauts. Not enough to be on this list, but it is a Shadow Realm game. No, I'm not going to dead zone Psychonauts. This isn't a bit... I would never mess with you guys like that. I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to dead zone Psychonauts. Okay, back to the decision. Okay, I have made my decision, and this is a tough one. I think it's got to be Donkey Kong Country 2. Uh, this was my maybe favorite game growing up when I was little. Um, I love the atmosphere of this game. It takes the world of Donkey Kong and makes it like dark and scary and weird. I love Diddy and Dixie as characters. I think they're the most fun Kongs to play as. Um, I think it's way better than Donkey Kong Country 1 and 3. I love it. I think when you compare it to other like 2D platformers, mechanically it doesn't have the depth that like a Super Mario World would have. But I do think it also completely outstrips Mario World in terms of atmosphere, in terms of music. Sticker Brush Symphony is like... Ultra Force, dude, you're gonna have to accept that I really like Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, it's... It's a really great game, but I can also, I can pretty much make arguments for every other game on this list over it. And so I think I'm going to have to cut it, cut it. Oh, okay. I fucking hate this cut. I really hate this cut. Okay. But I think the next game I got to cut is No More Heroes. Um, and this hurts me, chat. This hurts me. But I gotta be honest. I went back and I played the No More Heroes remaster recently. And that game is a lot rougher than I remember. Like, a lot, lot rougher. And if you're losing your mind at this, it's like... You should go back and play it and see if you have the same experience. But, like, there's, there's like a, there's like a, a kind of... There's a lot of weird effects in that game that I think worked back then, don't work now. There's this like hit delay whenever you hit someone and it feels super weird. And for all the personality and all the style of No More Heroes, it's so hard for me to like hold it up to things like, okay, like let's look at the games that surround it. Metal Gear Solid 2, Mother 3, Nier, Ocarina of Time, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, fucking all 10 out of 10 like near flawless games. Just can't let it go further, even though I think I love this game more than a lot of other shit on this list. But I have to be able to justify it somehow. So away it goes. And it hurts. It, it, it hurts. I love this game so much. And you know what? In that same vein, I'm going to cut The Walking Dead Season 1. Um, I think an absolutely revolutionary game for its time. Uh, one of the best stories I've ever experienced in games. The way that game comes together and like there's a scene in the last episode where it's you and you sitting with someone you've unintentionally wronged and it is to me was some of the most powerful shit i'd ever experienced in a game up until that point clementine is the absolute fucking best i love that little girl i wanted to protect her i wanted everything to be okay i thought they would go one way and they went a complete other way beautiful game beautiful story i bet it's aged badly i bet the tech behind it has is not fun and like there's game breaking bugs in it but i adored it and i thought like the way lee was such a sweet compelling character and he was really good to control and some of the like shocking moments that come in like episode two and episode three were just incredible and i i love that game i have such fond memories of that game it's one of the first games that me and michelle like played together and really like loved together and that was a huge part of it but I also think it's the kind of game that allowed that to happen. Okay. Next up. At number 41 is Super Punch-Out. Um, 
one of the best Super Nintendo games in existence. Um, I think maybe some of like the cultural stereotypes have not aged super great, um, but I think it's like it's not one of the best boxing games ever made. It's one of the best puzzle games ever made in that each enemy of that game is a puzzle you have to crack. I would put it slightly above the Wii Punch Out, even though I love Wii Punch Out, because I think the feeling of punching people is so much better in Super Punch Out. And I think the art style, the animation is much better in the Wii version, but I think the art style is stronger on Super Punch Out. Fucking fantastic game. If you haven't played it, it's on the SNES Classic and you should. And just take time and like figure out like all that, all, all that game has to offer because it is great. Oh, that takes us to the stairway of greatness. Oh, I think I know what I gotta cut soon and it hurts, but I gotta do it. The first entry into the stairway of greatness. Oh my god, these are all fucking killers. These are all like the best games ever, according to me. It's got it's gotta be Streets of Rage 2. I fucking love that game so much, but it's an hour and a half like scrolling beat em up. And you know, if you want to talk about like games that have like style and like just like fucking like a kind of swagger to them. Streets of Rage 2 is one of the earliest and best that really meant something. It was this fucking Sega Genesis game that had like house music in it, that had club music, that was going out into culture and taking the grimiest, like edgiest shit people could find and actually turning into its own thing with Yuzo Koshiro's, Yuzo Koshiro's soundtrack. And it's beautiful. It's such a fantastic game. It's only... The only way I can find fault with it is looking at the other games on this list and comparing it to them. Yeah, what was it said in Streets of Rage 2? The police cannot help you, only your fists or something like that. Proved to be true. Proved to be true. Okay. This next one hurts me so much. But I feel like I have to do it because I just can't find a meaningful reason why it can compare it to any of these games. I am cutting Shenmue 2. Now look, I am aware of what Shenmue has become over time and I know in hindsight how fucking silly those games look, but you have to understand when those games came out, they were a fucking new world for video games. They were a whole new thing and like it's so easy to go now and look at the near nonsensical game design and like the laughable voice acting. But the reason that stuff is so fucking broken is because there was nothing even attempting anything close to that when Shenmue came out. And to me Shenmue 2 is the much better game between Shenmue 1 and 2. And you know <coughs> for as much as like a laugh at it when we do the let's plays and let's fight a boss when i think of like shit that just had me mesmerized in front of like a gaming console shenmue 2 is it i cannot find very many arguments when it when there's a list like link to the past mother 3 and um, red dead resident evil 4 like it's just not gonna happen but in its own way i think shenmue 1 and 2 are still beautiful games and i still think they're worthwhile but I gotta leave it here. You sure love Shenmue 3, boy do I. Why is Bloke Pokemon Blue still here? Because it's one of the greatest, most influential games of all time. You fucking heathens, okay? That's why it's still here. Next up for the cut, I think it's gotta be Toho 8 Imperishable Night. Um, Toho 8 is about as perfect a game as there is on this list. Um, I'm not like huge into Toho, but I'm huge into Imperishable Night. I think it's such a fucking glorious mix of really cool visuals and amazing soundtrack. It's like a shoot 'em up game. It's like a bullet hell game if you haven't played it. And it's just joyous. And I think out of any game I've ever played, it's like, it's, oh man, it's just like, it is the most flow state inducing game. You know, like you zone out and you just hit that zone and it's incredible. It's so, so good. And I love it. And it's like one of those ones, it hurts so much to cut it, but I just gotta... Um, is it not pronounced to who? <laughs> okay, moving on. This is hard. This is hard. Now this is me having to really like devour my babies, but I gotta do it. We gotta get to the end of this. Uh, 
fuck. Oh, God. Okay, I think I know what I gotta do next. Uh. Oh, this sucks. This is... This is bad. I don't want to... I don't want to do this. Don't make me do this. I gotta cut Nier. Nier is a beautiful game. Um, you know that, like, old cliche of, like, more than the sum of its parts? I think in a lot of ways, Nier... And I'm talking about original Nier. I'm not talking about Tomata. I think Nier... I know, I know, I know. But, like... Nier is such a beautiful story, and it does do so much interesting shit with its gameplay. I also think a lot of its gameplay is kind of bad, and, like, the pacing of some of the dungeons is really bad. And it's just... It's just gotta go. And it's hard, because, like... To me, it's the it's the it's the game that did like the whole flip perspective thing. Now you see things from the enemy's point of view. It did that better than any game I've ever experienced, and I adore it. And that party might be my favorite like party of an RPG. You know, you got Kaine, you got all the other guys, Emil. It's just beautiful. There's so many fantastic cutscenes with like those characters forming relationships. And it's fantastic. It is so good. Maybe it deserves to go higher. It's really hard for me to say. But just every other game on this list is just so fucking solid at this point. I think it just, it has to end here. Oh. Emil, best boy. Boy, is he. Oh, I just felt myself waver on Guitaru, man. That's not, that's not fun. That's not fair. Um, do you recommend tracking down the original or playing replicants? Personally, I am not a big fan of Brother Near. I feel like that that's, that dynamic gets a little kind of pandery in a way I'm not into when it's Brother Near. But I th it, to me, it makes more sense thematically as Father Near. But um, each to their own on that one, like people's mileage is going to vary. Okay, next cut is going to be... WWE No Mercy, the greatest wrestling game of all time, a fucking defining cultural moment in my teenage years. I poured like dozens and dozens and dozens of hours into No Mercy. It was fucking brilliant. They have never made, since then, they have never made a WWE game that's even come close to it. The amount of times, so me and my friend, right, our Saturday night was we would order pizza we would set up a pay-per-view and watch the AI wrestlers fight and commentate over it. And I swear to God, watching those matches is some of the happiest I have ever been. It is such a great game. This is... I, don't, I have nothing bad to say about it. It's its kind of perfect in a lot of ways. It I'm not going to talk about how it's aged. I'm not going to talk about any of that. It is a beautiful game. I refuse to say a bad word about it. It was real cozy. It was real cozy. And, like, I, I've lost touch with that guy now. Like, that friend I used to do that with. We don't hang out anymore. Just, he kind of disappeared. And it's weird because he, that's one of those games where, like, it's linked to a person for me. And when I think that happens, I think that's really, like, special and powerful. You know what I mean? And I think that's... And, like, no, it's not something that belongs in an objective analysis of a game but like when the fuck have anything i ever done come close to objective you know i don't try and do that and i like i don't care that is a be that like i really value those memories and those memories would not exist without that game and um, putting this above near feels a bit unhinged but i get the personal attachment <laughs> yeah okay I, I i get that reminds me of your sonic video okay real talk the guy i just talked about is the guy who inspired that character in the Sonic video. And um, his name is not... I can't remember what I called him in the Sonic video. J Jake? His name is not Jake. But, like, that was all based on, like, real shit. I just, I just like, changed things. Yeah, no, there, there's some deep... Lo yeah, it's Jake. That guy was Jake. His name's not Jake, but that's who Jake was based on. And um, there's some deep lore for everybody. Yep, that was, that was a real person. He smoked and everything. He was like, he was like kind of like a, he was like my kind of edgier friend who was into a lot of bad shit that I shouldn't have been into. And he would get me in a lot of trouble, but he, you know, he had his own shit going on and kind of 
as we grew up, his kind of life went away and my life went away and like we just didn't belong in the same world anymore and it's kind of sad but i mean you know when a relation when a relationship like that ends and you're sad about it you know it was worthwhile so that's good i think anyway video games um wait did the i miss you thing actually happen no that did not happen uh, unfortunately there was no happy ending to the real life story john you sounded like you were in love with that person in the sonic video i mean yeah, I did. Um, I think next, it's gotta be Guitaru Man. And I love Guitaru Man so fucking much. It is my favorite rhythm game ever. It is one of my favorite games ever. It is so weird and out there. They did something that a lot of people don't do and... I really wish they did more of it, you know? It's basically they found a really weird artist and they built an entire game around his art style, you know? And I, God, I love that game. But um, I think mechanically it's very simple and it's a game that sells itself on its presentation and like, it does some cool stuff with gameplay, but it's like, it was just like a real i think it was like the moment i realized i liked weird fucking art let's actually pull up a little video of it because it's worth looking at how oh my god someone uploaded 4k guitar man oh god 4k guitar man so beautiful okay let me let me get the right one here so this is guitar man this is where you fight a bunch of aliens hang on i'm gonna pause the music so we can listen to it for a sec Oh my god, that game looks so good in 4K. It was such a hard game, but it was great. One of the best games of all time, Jim Sterling agrees. All the songs are this good as well. Like, every... Uh, let's let's get to the harmony at the end. It's so sick. Are you telling me that this does not elicit great joy in you? Are you do you not feel like you are witnessing something absolutely beautiful in Guitaru Man? There's a boss later on in Guitaru Man called the Sambone Trio. And I must have fought them like a hundred times or something. And when I finally beat them, I like punched the air so hard. Uh, someone was asking for the name of this song. It's Crystal Heart by Ghost Data. Okay, I think I know what's got to go now. This is going to set people off. I don't care. Okay. At number 33, it's Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is a fucking fantastic game. It is like one of the closest a video game has ever come to being like an amazing action game, action film. That in itself is a problem because why I don't have a problem with Resident Evil 4 at all, I love it. It was the moment to me that Resident Evil stopped being Resident Evil and it started to stop being something like really quite like scary and frightening and like really hitting on some shit to being it is infinitely replayable you're absolutely right i also think it's the moment that like one of my favorite series in existence really started to not be itself and like five six seven i i don't like those games you know i just and that's a bummer like it really it bums me out that it's like that but it's true Nope, Ori after Ori is still Ori. I'm not saying like it's not Resident Evil, but to me, that's like that that is kind of like what it is, you know? And it sucks, but I think compared to what we have left in this list, I gotta cut something, and I think it has to be Resident Evil. And I think the next couple of cuts, people are gonna be so mad. Sand Noodle Online, a how Ori 4 changed Resident Evil video it would be wild you see i feel like that's really like 
there's really that that's I'd see that's kind of very like worn very well worn territory and I don't know if I could come up with like an interesting enough angle to make a video like that worthwhile. Uh, um okay, next game. Like to me it's the old school Resident Evil games that I really love and Ori 4 was the first step away from that, but I can't discount like what a fucking amazing game it is. Like I remember always remember like when I was um when I was like like graduating from high school I went out camping with all these guys like in the middle of the woods and these were all like my old kind of classmates and stuff and at about four in the morning I remember like we were all hanging out and I remember just realizing man I don't actually like these guys that much you know what I mean and so I walked home I walked three hours home in like the freezing cold morning and I took a bus into town and I bought Resident Evil 4 and End of Evangelion and um just a DVD of End of Evangelion, Resident Evil 4. That was the best summer I ever had. I just played through it over and over, and I played it with my little cousins, and it was just fucking incredible. And I really, really value that. Um, yeah, that would be my pick for that. Okay, moving on. We still got we still got some places to go. Okay, next cut. This one's been hanging on for a long time for me. This is going to make people super mad. I am cutting Half-Life. Um, original Half-Life, incredible game. Really, really good. <laughs> some people are like, yeah! And some people are like, no! Um, Half-Life, obviously, can't deny... Like, I think what's so special about Half-Life, it, it emerged in this conversation when everyone was talking about, like, Unreal Tournament and Quake... And everyone was like, which is going to be the winner of the shooters? And then Half-Life comes along and made everything else look fucking obsolete in a day. And that was incredible. Um, it's, a, it's maybe one of the most important games on this list. In terms of my personal feelings towards it, I love it. I spent a lot of time playing it as a teenager. I really did not like Half-Life 2. And the series ended up not meaning a lot to me after that. Half-Life 2 ranks way. See, I don't even rank Half-Life 2. I don't like it. In fact, if you guys want to talk about Half-Life 2, we can talk about Half-Life 2, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's somewhere somewhere you guys want to go. <laughs> no, I'm not going to dead zone Half-Life 2, but I just I think that game gets a lot of credit for inventing inventing seesaw puzzles in games and honestly just who gives a shit. But um, Half-Life 1, I felt like, when you look at the advancements that made, it's way more significant in several ways. But yeah, anyway, that's my very hot take on Half-Life. So we're going to move past that. We're going to just keep going. Okay, next up, Secret of Mana. Um, absolute childhood classic of a game for me. Um... Mechanically, it's not as sophisticated or deep as so many other games on this list. And its story isn't even that good for an RPG. The characters are barely written. But it just has this undeniable fucking X factor. I just don't think you can take away from it. You know, it's like, it's just this weird, like, perfect combination of visuals and sound that really, like, when I was a kid, like, genuinely took me into another world. And I just fucking love it you know actually let's i want i want to get some secret of mana visuals up on screen and i want to play some music because people need to understand listen to that shit on a super nintendo sound chip Like, there was something so sad and lonely about this music, but, like, so ethereal as well. Like, Maiden Abyss always reminded me of this music. And then, like, when you see that layered on top of, like, um, I'll just pull up some gameplay super quick. You can't really tell there. This isn't a great quality video, but it just had some of the most charming pixel art in, like, the whole thing. nero has got a really fantastic video on Secret of Mana, which I'd check out. But, yeah. It's gotta go. It's gotta go. There's no two ways about it. <sighs> okay. 
Number 31. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this is like Sand Noodle Online. This is like watching Giant Bomb Game of the Year, but it's only John fighting the various versions of himself. Oh, it's, that's what it feels like, though. It's so difficult. Um, and we still have, like, we're, st we're, we're coming up to the hardest part. Okay, okay, I have a... Oh, okay, I know what it is, but he hear me out with this one, okay? Just hear me out, okay? The next cut is going to be Super Smash Brothers for the Switch. Um, now, let me explain, okay? I think if you sum up Smash Bros. as a series and all the games that Smash Brothers have had, you get, like, my favorite, maybe one, maybe my favorite series ever. Just something fucking brilliant. I feel like at this point, it's impossible to boil that down into one game. Like, I love Smash Bros. Switch. I've played maybe 60 hours of it, and, like, I feel like this game could easily be Melee. Hey, like, this game could be Brawl. Like, I played so much Brawl. But, like, this is the ranking of the 100 best games of all time for me, not the best series. And so I feel like I... I have to... It has to be that. It has to be Super Smash Bros. for Switch. I hope that makes sense. Because, like, it's more that just... I think Smash, like, Smash Bros. Switch is my favorite version of Smash. But, like, to really... To really get across why I'd love Smash, we'd have to talk about the whole series as one, rather than just like the one, this one game. And so for that reason, I think it has to go. Okay, we are now moving into the ascension of the Super Beast, the top 30 games. Um, Koznagi, any thoughts? Um, any thoughts of doing an anime top 100 next? I'm sure you'll be able to shatter my hopes and dreams in the future. You see, if I did an, if I did a top 100 anime of all time, it would like. It would set off, like, riots in the anime community. People would make videos about it. Everyone would get so angry about it because that's what anime people do. And it just does not sound like a good time to me, I don't think. And also, this is exhausting. I am, like, dying trying to make this list. Like, I would, like, if you guys, like... Obviously, people are going to look at my list and be like, well, I don't agree with that, and that's fine. But I would really challenge you guys, like, make your own list and see what it feels like when you have to make these just impossible decisions about games you love so much. Like, it is, it is exhausting. It's fun, but, it, like, it is tiring. Okay. Next up. I think it's got to be... Okay, I think the next one is going to be Resident Evil Remake. Um, to me, just the flat out best survival horror game that's ever been made. Um, a just fucking staggering achievement. I think it still looks beautiful, especially in like the remake of the remake, the remaster of the remake, whatever you want to call it. Um, an incredible step forward for games, I thought. And like, it just took so much of what made that like what took so much of what made Resident Evil amazing and just pushed it even further and it pushed it honestly to a height I don't think any survival horror game Resident Evil or otherwise has come close to since and I I want something to dethrone it but I think that is the best survival horror game there is um I fucking adore it and it's landing at number 30 which at this point we are talking millimeters between these games but yeah Next, I'm going to go for Bayonetta 2. My favorite character action game ever. I love it. It's a coin toss between this and Bayonetta, but I just love this game so much. Um, I think, like, the cutscenes, Bayonetta's attitude, it all comes, like, through, to me, better than it did in the first game. I think there's... Um, there's like an argument to be made that Bayonetta 1 is a much deeper game and in some ways kind of better designed, but I think just the flair of 2 is what pushes it over the edge to me. Wait! Devil May Cry 5 is still here, isn't it? Oh my god, I forgot about that. Hold the phone, hold the phone. No. No, I love Devil May Cry 5, but it's not better than Bayonetta 2. Hold the phone. Devil May Cry 5, number 29. Bay Guys, you gotta, you gotta cut me some slack here. It's 2 a.m. I've been streaming this for 4 hours and 20 minutes. My brain's going a little bit, but that that feels good for me. That feels good. 
Look, guys, I got, like, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I think Bayonetta 2 is a better action game, Devil May Cry 5, by, like, that much. By that much, but I think it is. Look, that's the only time that's happened, okay? That's the only time, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, why do I think that De Bayonetta 2 is a better, like, is a better character action game than Devil May Cry 5? Um, okay. To me, Devil May Cry 5 is Bloody Palace. I think the rest of that game is good. I think Bloody Palace is where it's at. It's where it teaches you to play that game. You can get through all of Devil May Cry 5 on normal without really knowing how to play that game. I think the hidden depths of Devil May Cry 5 only come out in Bloody Palace. To me, Bayonetta 2 not only has a more varied and exciting campaign, it also teaches you how to play it better to the point that you feel like a fucking ninja playing Bayonetta 2 even if you're not playing it at its highest difficulties. To me, that feeling with Devil May Cry 5 does not come across until you are like floor 60 of Bloody Palace and moving upwards. Um, no DMC3, I think DMC Devil May Cry 5 is the better experience. But people have always played DMC5 for the combo outside the story. I don't see how that makes any difference to what we were just talking about. Um, yeah, that would be my justification. I think the campaign in Bayonetta 2 is a lot better. And, like, that's a huge part of it for me. If people want to disagree with that, that's fine. But, yeah, that would be where I have to go. And, um, yeah, the Virgil DLC is amazing. See, this sucks because I love Devil May Cry 5. It's made it into my top 30 games ever. And I know, like, it seems to be, like... Um, I know, I know people, I know it seems like I'm nearly shit-talking it, but it's an incredible game as well. Like, I love it, but I don't think it's as good as Bayonetta 2. I still, Bay to me, Bayonetta 2 is still, like, the cre like the queen of character action. Okay, next game. Okay, next up is Street Fighter Alpha 3. Um, Street Fighter Alpha 3 was the game that got me into fighting games. It was the game that got me into, like, anime. It was a massively influential piece of art from, like, where my life would head. Um, it's still, to me, one of the most beautiful art styles of any fighting game. And, like, there is stuff with more lavish animation, but just as, like... Oh, God. When you see those character portraits and they're so fun and they're so expressive... Nothing beats that for me, and it's so much fun to play still. It's kind of broken in a lot of ways. The character balance is crazy, but Jesus Christ, like, air blocking supers and, like, going down into alpha counters, it was so, so good. And one of the best rosters in fighting games. The, it is... There is only one Street Fighter game I think is better than it, and that's, I think, why it's not going to go further. But, yeah. The Karen laugh. Oh, it's so good with friends. And do you remember earlier I was talking about Garo and like how I never got in a point where I got to play that with friends? For me, Street Fighter Alpha 3 was that game where me and friends were constantly inventing new tech to outdo each other. And it was just so intense and emotional and just fucking brilliant. Oh, that's such a crazy one to call. I love that game. Okay. Now let's keep moving. Okay, you know, I think while we're on it, Tekken 5, like, that occupies a very similar place to me. I think Tekken 5 is still hands down the best Tekken. I think it's the, it's a mix of the really cool atmosphere and story from 4. It has one of the best rosters, especially if you factor in the Dark Resurrection characters. Uh, Dragonov is amazing. But, like, those new characters, it was, like, Raven, Asuka, and, um... The monk guy, Feng Wei, or is that virtue? The monk dude, he, those three were so fucking great, and each three had such a strong, like, aesthetic and gameplay style. I played Tekken 5 in arcades all the time. Had one of my best memories ever playing, um, playing, because I played all, I had one of my best memories ever playing arcades in Tekken 5, because I played all the way to the end of the game, and I beat Jin Pachi in the arcade, and I just beat him and I turned around and when I did there was a crowd around me and they started clapping. And I thought that was the fucking funnest, coolest thing. Um, it's got an amazing soundtrack. If for a PS2 game it looks absolutely sensational. Really cool stages, really cool art direction. It's such a good game and this feels like the right place for it to be. 
Um, oh, such a good song. This is this is good. This is good. We gotta power through. We're getting there. We're getting there. Whew. Okay. Ugh. Okay, next up. We have Legend of the Mystical Ninja Ganbore Goemon. Um at some point I may have said that this is one of my top five games of all time. Um in hindsight. Maybe that was a little generous. I think top 25 games of all time is more accurate. It is... It is... But top five... I know, okay, okay, okay. It has maybe some difficulty spikes that are a little unjustified. But... <laughs> if anyone ever sends... Don't ever... Don't anyone... No one's allowed to clip this. Don't anyone send this to Wooly, okay? I am forbidding... I am forbidding this to ever reach him. I'll never hear the fucking end of it, okay? Um, I love this game. I love this game so, so much. It has maybe my favorite art style on the Super Nintendo. Some of my favorite pixel art. It is absolutely fucking great. And no matter what Wooly says, I still love the game design of this game. Hitting stuff feels so good. Those levels are so imaginative and fun. It is a nightmare. It is... <laughs> I run the Goemon subreddit and frankly I'm appalled. Aw, that's really cool. Um, 25 feels like the right place for it. It hurts. It really does to cut it. But yeah, this is the right... This is as far as it goes. Okay, let's keep moving. Jesus, we really... We're getting in it now, guys. Okay, I got it. At number 24, we have Wind Waker. I love Wind Waker. I fucking love Wind Waker. I think it is one of the most, like, imaginative best Zeldas. It is... It, it, it's much better to me than any of like any Zelda game in the last decade. I absolutely adore it. Its art style is one of the best art style in games. I love the gameplay. It's a little easy, but I still really like it. I liked the Triforce hunting. I thought all that stuff was good. I liked that. But I can't put it ahead of Majora's Mask. I can't put it ahead of Ocarina of Time. There's a lot of stuff I can't put it ahead of on this list. And yeah, like there's going to be a lot of Zelda games in these top, but that's how much I love Zelda. And what I'd say is I think each of them really do their own thing. And that's what Wind Waker did. I really respect Nintendo for like making such a... They swerved everyone, you know? It seemed like it was going to... That Zelda was going to be this dark, edgy, adult thing. And they went the complete opposite way of it and fucking killed it. Um, I would... I would say maybe the best last boss fight of any Zelda as well. Just absolutely fucking amazing. Um, may Toss up between that and Ocarina of Time's last boss fight. Okay. Next up, I am cutting Final Fantasy VI. A lot of people love Final Fantasy VI. A lot of people will tell you it is the best Final Fantasy. I don't think that's a bad opinion, but it ain't mine. I love that game. Especially, like, from, like, a kind of world-building art-wise. The shit they do with Kefka is amazing. The shit they do with your party is amazing. It's a great game. Like, it is a fantastic game. Like, look at how high it has made it on this list, okay? But... For me, it's like, I think a lot of people's favorite Final Fantasies is their first Final Fantasy. And I don't know how true that is, but for me, I came to it after 7, and it just felt like a step backwards. And... <laughs> People are so mad. Um, but, yeah, I, lo like, I love the game. I think I don't have the personal connection to it. A lot of people do, and this is as far as it can go for me. Like, I, I think it's an amazing game. I think it's beautiful. I think what it does with the characters is so cool. Some of the stuff doesn't hit home with me in the same way I think it does for some people and like there's no I like all the characters of Final Fantasy 7 a lot I don't love any of them and I think that is ultimately where the game doesn't go further for me okay okay next game Dead Rising I'm guessing for a lot of people it is bewildering how Dead Rising made it this far 
it's an awkward ass game. It's like got like really weird save mechanics. It's so janky to get your head around, but when you do, I still think this game offers just a kind of experience like nothing else does. I think it offers that like perfect B-movie tone. To me, after this, Dead Rising got too zany and completely lost it. But like the psychopath battles, all that kind of stuff, I feel like it captured so beautifully this really cheesy feeling of being trapped in a mall for an outbreak and it had so much fun with it. And I basically got this game at the start of one summer and I played it over and over and over and I think I beat it around eight times or something and I had such an incredible time with it. And like the way every single weapon you can pick up has like uh, its own weight and feel and like there's so many weird little like ways and then like you start basically it kind of does a Majora's Mask, not a Majora's Mask thing. You basically have three days to solve the mystery of the shopping mall and you can just run around and do stupid shit the entire time or you can just follow everything and I think it's actually a really fascinating piece of game design and like to be honest with you like there's games with better stories there's games that look better there's games with better characters I don't know that there's many games on this list I think are more fun than Dead Rising like for pure fun factor I fucking love it so much and I know a lot of people aren't going to agree with that but I genuinely think it's one of the coolest games I've ever played and still one of my favorites and like still something I could end this stream and just go play and have a great time with I think it's a weird game because like if you don't like it I think there's a lot of good reasons not to like it but if it clicks with you like it does me there's really nothing else like it still and I adore it for that reason okay Mass Effect 2 at number 21. I adore Mass Effect 2. My favorite Mass Effect game, one of my favorite RPGs of all time. Um, again, one of my, some of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters ever. I love, I love Garrus. I love everyone on that ship. They're like, well, the, the, what's her name? The bald girl I wasn't crazy about, but she was still fun. Jack, like in her own way, she like, made interesting friction with those other characters i love the story i love the writing i still think it's the peak of mass effect and it's interesting like the writing and the dialogue in that game is so good i always remember the first speech from mass effect 3 i remember listening to it and thinking that's not right that's not the right tone and I went and I looked and surely the lead writer from mass effect 2 was no longer working on mass effect 3 and i just i knew it I think the shooting mechanics could be better. I still think it does cool things with shooting mechanics. God, people are so mad over Red Dead. Um, should one start with um, Should one start with two? I actually started with two, and I find that found that a really fine way to get into the series. So yeah, I think you can. Garrus, Tally, Grunt, and Legion were my favorites. Like exactly. Like even those, just those guys were fucking brilliant. Okay, we're at the top twenty. We're just gonna keep rolling here. We are in the battle on heavenly ground. This is it. Okay. For me, the next game is Majora's Mask. What a weird, broken, special game. The weirdest Zelda game. So fucking out there and interesting. I can't believe that what is basically an asset reuse of Ocarina of Time could be such a profoundly weird and interesting experience. Its mechanics have been talked to death. It's like... The idea, it's so dark and nihilistic, but then, like, so hopeful as well. And, like, just that whole town and learning to know that town and, like, the different intricacies of how they interact with each other. It's fucking brilliant. It's about death. Yeah, like, it is a Legend of Zelda game about death and dying and the inevitability and learning to accept that. It is a fucking exceptional game. I think there's like a few rough edges, nothing that I feel like is even worth bringing up, but it stands at number 20, which brings us to number 19. <sighs> okay, at number 19, I think it's gotta be Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door fucking incredible game one of the best rpgs of all time and it's so difficult like 
it's so difficult explaining that to people who haven't played it, but like the writing in that game is so sharp. The art direction is amazing. Um, it's just such a fantastic fucking game. And like the battle system is one of the cleverest and tightest I've ever played. And oh man, I think the only thing that keeps it from going higher to me is I think nearly everything else on this list I either had that like a massive like personal a connection to or like change the games industries. And like I have a hugely like personal connection to the Thousand Year Door in that I think it's really, really good. Guys, like chill about Red Dead. I really like that game and you know, you can't be shocked every time I don't pick it. It's not gonna make like Red Dead won't be number one, chill, but it is gonna be like high, okay? Um But um Yeah. I think, yeah, like, with the thing about Thousand Mirror Door is it tells a nice story, but, like, it's not a story that I feel ever really, like, emotionally hit me the way, like, the best RPGs kind of can do. Um, and I think that's the only thing it's missing. I think, like, if you put, like, a really emotionally impactful story in there, we'd be talking, like, top five. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked to see it out this early. But, yeah, it's that kind of thing. When I look at what's left... <coughs> It is difficult to really justify it ahead of them. Okay. So I see people like kind of leaving like kind of kind of various opinions about Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, this is Red Dead 2 is like an interesting one for me because I feel like I'm kind of with you on a lot of them, right? Because like I played Red Dead 2 and I played it for like 20 hours and I put it down and I was like, okay, it seems pretty cool, but like I think that's enough for me. I think I might just go read the Wikipedia. But um then afterwards, I, took, I was taking some time off from YouTube and I was kind of in a shitty place and I sat down and I just spent every day playing Red Dead Redemption 2. And that's kind of like the ideal way to play that game, you know? And I got so invested in that world and characters and just the story of like... How that dude just fucking fell apart and like what it said about death and legacy and like, you know like familial like familial bonds i thought it was just fucking amazing but i'm gonna talk about more than that when we cut it and that's not going to be now because i think the next game we gotta cut yeah i i genuinely think he's one of the arthur is one of the best protagonists in any game but i'll, I'll talk about that more in a sec okay you know what next i'm cutting pokemon blue um, I know kind of people are like, how did that make it this far? And with Pokemon Blue, like what you got to understand is I was there on the ground level when Pokemon wasn't a thing. Pokemon wasn't, con there, there was no convention for Pokemon. You could not understand it. You couldn't say it was like Pokemon games because Pokemon games didn't exist. And then me and my dad wandered into a shop called Mr. Calculator in Dublin, Ireland. And by some miracle, they had an American import of it. And I downloaded it and I took it home. And I swear to God, that game hypnotized me harder than I've ever been hypnotized by any game. It was fucking amazing. And I remember just raising my Bulbasaur. Like, I didn't know what my Bulbasaur was going to evolve into. Can you imagine how exciting that is? how exciting that was, you know, and it was such an amazing experience, um, and then, like, I also remember, like, I hung out with these kids, I know a lot of these stories kind of end with me being like, and then I never saw that person again, but I was hanging out with these kids I didn't like, because they were kind of mean and shitty, and at some point, I was like, I'd be having a way better time if I went indoors and played Pokemon, and I did, and I never saw those kids. I stopped hanging out with those kids because Pokemon was better than them. Pokemon Blue was better than some people I know. That's how good it is. Um, incredible game. Completely groundbreaking. Started one of the biggest media franchises on the earth. I adore it. Okay. Next up. Super Mario World. Super Mario World, like, what, I don't even know what you can say about this game, but I can tell you, like, going from Super Mario Land 3 to Super Mario World was the most insane shit. Like, m my, like, looking into a screen playing Super Mario World was like looking at fucking magic. That's what you felt like you were seeing when you, when, like, it first came out. Um, 
it's so fun, it's so weird, it's so creative, it is still one of the best games ever, I don't think it's aged a single day. Again, I think maybe some of the games left on this list have more of an emotional punch for me than that game, but I still adore it, and I'd still just, like, play it for hours, it's still fucking great. Uh, a bad proof of concept, overrated, my own experience. You see, it could be, but it's always hard to say unless you were there for a game that monumental that did shit that differently. So you could say that, like, different platformers might be better than it now, but man, at the time, like, it was just so good. Okay, moving on. Ooh, this is so tough. Okay, for now, it's gotta be Virtua Fighter 4 Evolution. Uh... The best 3D fighting game in existence. Um, I love this game so much. Uh, one of the best rosters ever. It's just pure fighting game perfection. But the real X factor of this game, for me, is it's single player. This had a gigantic single player mode with all these AI control fighters. So you would wander around to different arcades and you would fight these AI controlled characters that all played like their own individual characters and fighting style. And I always remember there was this one fucking character and he was called Lee Bai and I could never beat him. And then like I went through the whole game with him demolishing me every time. And then in the like very last stage of the game, I entered a tournament in the biggest arcade there was. And in the finals, it was me and Lee Bai. And I was so pissed because I knew I wasn't going to beat him. And like it took ages to get there and I was going to have to get here all over again. And then in like one of the most clutch matches I've ever had, I beat this AI controlled opponent. And it was just elative. It was the best feeling and it was incredible. It added Go, one of my favorite fighting game characters ever. And it had some of the best, for the time, custom like customization options in any game. Um, beautiful game. In some ways, I don't think... I don't think fighting games have ever had as good single player options as that did. And I wish, I wish they would go back and take influence from it because it's incredible. Guys... Top 15, here we are, we're doing it, we're nearly there. I actually thought it would go further, but I think at this point, I gotta drop Devotion. Uh, Devotion is the second best horror game I've ever played. Um, it's from a tiny Taiwanese studio, it feels like it has the like production quality of like a AAA film. Um, I have an entire video on Devotion, so I'm not going to say too much about it. But I think it is a profoundly sad and frightening game about how, about how when we are at our lowest and most desperate, the most insidious aspects of like society can just creep into us and ruin everything. And I think it's it's like it's a real fucking like it's supernatural and it's weird and it's spooky, but it's all it's all based on real shit. Like and that's what I love from horror. You know when it when it. When it takes, like, this real-life stuff and takes it to this whole other level. And, like, Devotion isn't just one of the best horror games I've ever played. It's one of the best pieces of horror I've experienced. Games, movies, books, anything. It's just fucking beautiful. And, like, I hate saying this. It is a piece of art. Like, it is... It is... If anyone is not done with that tired-ass argument of where games are, are there, whether games are art or not, Devotion is the kind of game I would show them. Will anyone ever be able to play it? God, I fucking hope so. Devotion. I actually thought Devotion would go higher. I'm kind of sad that it hasn't, but yeah. Okay, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. It is nearly 3 a.m. in Ireland. Next up is going to be Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a game with so many fucking problems. It is so awkward. The shooting is so repetitive. Everything takes so long and it drags out and the game itself is way too fucking long There's like any number of things and like the mission structure. This should be a game I feel like about like Being able to approach different problems your own way You know you should be able to do all that shit in it But every mission ha feels like it has this linear ass like do it this exact way And if you go outside this way you'll fail and all that kind of stuff, but despite all of that 
I still think it is an absolutely incredible game and one of the best stories games have ever fucking told. And I feel like there's so much in there about like non-biological families and the legacy you leave behind in a way that is just so fucking profound. Like, I don't know how else to describe it, you know? I am... And like, oh, there's that one scene between um, Arthur and I think it's Jesse. It's it's the girl who joins your group. Her name escapes me right now. But he has that line where he's like, we're more ghosts than people. And like, it's so fucking like, you know, when you're just trapped in a particular mindset and you're obsessed with the way things were like four or five years ago or whatever. It is a game about that. It is a game about being just trapped by your past and wanting to move on and wanting to escape, but completely being unable to. And that is so fucking tragic and beautiful that, yeah, I get it. I get that there's so many problems in that game, but, like, when it tells a story that fucking good, I have no choice but to say it's, like, the 14th best game of all time, you know? And, like, it does it through the gameplay, you know? Like, it does it, like... You're just walking around, you spend like 30, 40 hours of Ar uh, as Arthur and your body is fine, you're okay. And next thing you fall off your fucking horse on this mission and the set and like, how strongly does that communicate the idea of sickness that there is something really fucked in your body and you're going to die? Nothing has ever made me feel like that before. And so like, I get it. It's a controversial game, it's divisive, but the shit it does well, it does better than maybe anything else. And that would be my justification behind putting this at number 14. Yeah, a bad proof of concept, the highest highs eclipse the lowest lows for you, every single time. Number 13, Lisa the Painful. I love Lisa the Painful. I love it so much. Um, I feel like a lot of what I just said about Red Dead Redemption 2 could be applied to Lisa except it takes six hours, and it is so, like, it is one of the most tragic games I've ever played. This absolutely made me cry, this game. Like, it was, um, it's again about a deeply broken, broken person. You're playing as this man who's addicted to drugs, and then he finds, I don't want to say too much because I really just want people to play it, but um, he finds a new reason to live, and then things go wrong, and it is just a game about being trapped, like, just being trapped in this violent, cruel world. There are no right decisions, everything is always against you, and it's fucking beautiful. You know, it, like, it, it is just a game where there is always bad, there's, bad things always happen, and you just have to go with it, and it's incredible. Um, there's parts of it that are rough, the battle system's a little rough, some of like the way you navigate the world kind of sucks. The lows of the game are so far e e eclipsed by its highs, I, yeah, please, please go play that game. <sighs> yeah, totally, it is one of the most underrated games. Usof, Lisa and Outer Wilds are my favorite indie games. I wish I got Outer Wilds, like I respect it, but I just have no... I played it for like four hours, could not get into it at all. Okay, top 12. Which two games aren't going to make it into the top 10? This is fucking tough. Okay, at number 12, it's Super Mario 64. I mean... Super Mario 64 is an incredible game. It's still an incredible game. And it's was the first proper, legitimate, well-playing 3D game. And that's fucking amazing. And, like, even back then, I know I talked about earlier about, like, Super Mario Worlds being, like, looking into another world, like, into a new reality. Super Mario 64 was, like, that times 10. It It just destroyed my brain trying to figure out what that game was. But when you got it and you realized it was actually a fucking amazing game that played good, Nintendo nailed it, like, the first try, and in doing so, fucking changed video games, you know? Like, they changed everything with this one fucking game. There are games that I like better than on this list. I don't know that there is a more important game on this list. I genuinely don't. That's why it's not going further than this. <sighs> Number 11, Link to the Past. I think the moment that the Zelda franchise really ascended to greatness and just became what it is, you know? And 
I know 11 is going to be low for some people, but I have played that game, cleared it, I'd say about four or five times, and I adore it. It, 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 in a lot of ways, maybe it deserves to go higher, but to me, Ocarina of Time is the better game and a more important game, and I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but I just, that's what I got to go with. <sighs> okay, guys, we have reached the top 10. We are in the domain of God. We have gone through the gates of acceptance, the mountains of quality, the bridge of killers, the path of the elite, the doorway of the best, the threshold of brilliance, the stairway of greatness, the ascension of the super beast, the battle on heavenly ground to get to the sacred domain of God. We have gone through it all. Now. Ten games left. And at number ten... I think it's got to be Yakuza 0. Um, I fucking adore Yakuza 0. It's... I think, personally, the game I like most from the last generation. Uh, no, it's it's a tough... Like, oh, it's tough. It's tough. It is close to my favorite game from the last generation. Top 5, are we riot? I don't know, guys. I don't think I can help you with this. I think when I look at the rest of the games on this list, it's Yakuza 0. It's a fucking brilliant game. It is a just tremendous game. Uh, one of my favorite stories ever. One of the most fun stories ever. Like, just some of the best character writing, some of the best interactions, just everything about it. One of the most beautifully presented games ever. Like, one of my problems with Yakuza 7 is I feel like the presentation has slipped so much. And if you go back and watch some Yakuza 0 cutscenes, you'll see what I mean. Like, it's... They have these beautifully rendered 60 frames per second cutscenes. And it makes the game feel so cinematic and fucking meaningful. And it's all these tiny little pieces of, like, detail to all these really subtle interactions between characters. And I feel like you've really lost a lot of that from Yakuza, like Yakuza 7, that makes me sad. But it also, it took Majima, this fucking insane character, and it's like, here's how this well-mannered, low-key Yakuza turns into like, you know, the mad dog. And it was just such an amazing story. And like, at the heart of this game, I really think it's about just being a good person. You know, just doing what's right for the people around you, doing what's right for you know others and it's such a simple message but i thought the way they conveyed it was so powerful in that last scene and i'm not gonna say it is but when you watch that person walk away and you realize the weight of that and what majima is giving up that fucking destroys me every time i could watch that now and i would bawl like a baby and that is the strength of that game like i think it is about doing what is right when what is right is totally fucking impossible and it's incredible okay next metal gear solid 2 the number nine best game of all time <laughs> oh um i adore metal gear solid 2 i love it so 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 much um I'm not, I, I can't, I don't have it in me to really shit talk any game on this list. I'd just be like, I'd just be like pulling at things for the sake of it. Metal Gear Solid 2, I think, um, is, was one of the first times I started to feel like games could do things that other mediums couldn't. When you get to the end of it and it breaks the fourth wall and tells you to turn off your own PlayStation, that was like a profoundly fucked moment for me. Because I... Well, like, I guess you had, like, the Psychomantis moments from 1, but I really feel like the Psychomantis moments were these quirky little bits in that game, but the way, like, Metal Gear Solid 2, you get to the end of it and it just fucking breaks and everything is insane, like, that really messed with me in a way that I just was so fascinated by and loved, and I thought, like, its level of storytelling, its writing, I, to me, it was all above anything I'd seen before and like the level of cinematics I beat it seven or eight times I played it on European extreme and got to the fighter jet and I couldn't get past the fighter jet but it doesn't matter I think that's an amazing game and I haven't gone back and played it in a long time but I really want to I thought the bait and switch with Raiden was the biggest fuck you to the fans and I love that stuff people can make like 
like how ahead of it was it how ahead of that game was its time talking about like memes and all that kind of shit like incredible i think it's very easy to make the argument that metal gear solid 3 is a better game i like 2 better it just it hit home so much harder for me and like the weird meta shit it does i prefer that to like the kind of bond action film stuff of three so I, and that's entirely personal preference you know i'm not making the argument it's the better game just that it's the better game on this list and it's way better than hades um okay next up at number eight it's ocarina of time Ocarina of Time, I mean, like, what else can you say about Ocarina of Time? Uh, just a fucking profound moment for game design. Um, one of the, At the time, it was one of the best games ever made. It still is. I think there's an argument to be made that Nintendo... The step forward they took with Ocarina of Time, I don't think they've taken as significant a step forward since then. And I think trying to argue they have is... An exercise in futility. It took Legend of Zelda and it brought it into 3D for the first time and that should have been a fucking disaster. It should have been the worst thing ever and it wasn't. It was just this, like, in a lot of ways, one of the first, like, 3D open world games. And, like, you had stuff like Shenmue and Oblivion and stuff that would come later. But Ocarina of Time was like, okay, this isn't a level like this isn't a stage this isn't a path for you to clear this is a world go fucking play in it and like that is a profound moment in game design and i still have so little that makes me feel like that did like it was incredible and i yeah i still love that game absolutely love that game the 3ds remake of it is excellent but yeah that's the most i could say about it just a profound moment in game design guys we have seven games left we have seven games left keep those tiltify donations coming in we're doing good we're doing real good and we have only a little bit left to go okay number seven dark souls so when i talked about the step forward that ocarina of time took I think the next game that made me feel like that was Dark Souls. And it didn't do it like through an open world or like through a kind of revolutionary concept like that, but it did it through, I feel like, reshuffling a lot of game design that people took for granted and just creating this brutal fucking reality that just shook like what games were to its core. Like, I think to me, like, the most influential game of last generation is Dark Souls. Like, by like like the whole dark souls with meme it's like every game every fucking game like from the biggest to the smallest took influence from dark souls and i still think like it is beautiful i think um if you want to make the argument that bloodborne's a getter game i'm not going to argue with you there i think bloodborne has several things over dark souls but in terms of like the imagination of some of those bosses like meeting great gray wolf sif for the first time it's fucking crazy and like the triumph when you get to the end of that game when you fight your way through the nightmares of dark souls and the last boss is an old man in a cave it's the saddest most beautiful fucking thing you know what i mean yeah i think it's it's an incredible game and um, i feel like i can't really say much more about it because so much has already been said okay yeah someone just mentioned this in the chat but like moments like Sif remembering you or like you beat Sif this fucking so like difficult a boss and in his last moments he doesn't try and kill you he just try and walks away from you like there's that quote from uh, Miyazaki where he's like um he wants the monsters of Dark Souls to have like a kind of dignity to them and it's things like that that make that game so special because like these monsters are horrifying but they're kind of believable as creatures that could exist in this world and that makes them scarier but it makes them more real yeah it's just it's amazing oh, okay oh this is so tough this is fucking impossible oh my god i've i've been through these games so many times in my head and it's like it's like an impossible puzzle i can't fucking do it okay I am make I have made my decision. 
and this is like this is keeping in mind that there is millimeters between these games i love all these games so much and if you ask me to like do this list again tomorrow these could all be in a different order okay but this game the next game i'm cutting is undertale look i fucking love undertale so much yeah like look I know people are upset, but like, I literally did a four- like, I dedicated five weeks of my life to just Undertale. I love this game. I love it so fucking much. I think it is a profoundly beautiful game. I think the thing it says about video games, and I know like, it's easy to be like, oh, violence is not the right option. I think it does so much more than that, and it's not even like, it's less even about what it does, but how effectively it does it. The way that game make builds a relationship with the player, gets you fucking invested, I think is incredible. Um, I think it is one, genuinely one of the biggest step forwards for games in terms of like philosophy in the longest time and i wish there were more games like it you know i wish more shit did what undertale did like i really adore that game i think it's beautiful and i think the idea that it was born on the internet from a kickstarter spread through the internet by tumblr youtube all this kind of stuff it is in a very real sense a video game that exists because of the internet it is like a modern video game and it's fucking great you know and I really love it. It is one of my top six games of all time. Of all time. And it makes me sad to drop it at number six, but this is what I gotta do. If you wanna know why I love this game, you can go watch my recent video on it. Which I'm guessing you, a lot of you already have done, but it's there. Okay, top five video games. At number five... At number five, it's going to be Capcom versus SNK2. Um, the second best fighting game that's ever existed. Uh, the best roster that's ever existed. Just fucking absolutely brilliant game. Incredible art style. I love the story of the fighting tournament that gets interrupted. Um, yeah, a for like my like personal development and the things I was into profoundly impactful on like getting into anime getting into fighting games getting into all these different characters and just loving them so much um who did i play in cvs2 i played saga i played kami um i played um oh the king of fighters guy i why can't i remember his name the king of fighters guy the blonde guy who does like the the whip attacks yeah, like, it's just an endlessly customizable game, and it's it's fucking incredible. <sighs> okay. So, number four is gonna be Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Um, I don't know how else to describe this game other than just the most meticulously perfect fighting game I've ever played. Street Fighter 3 is infinite. Street Fighter 3 is just... I could play it forever and never feel like I know everything about that game. I feel like every character is such a different, unique fighting style, except for you and Ken. Um, and, like, I have played it, been playing it for, like, 15 years, and I still feel like a beginner at it, and I love that. Like, I love the end... Like, I love the endless depth that comes with that game, and a lot of it is just, it provides you with a defensive system that if you get good enough at, can get you out of literally every fucking, like, dangerous situation you could be in, if you have, like, the reaction time and just the fucking balls to do it. And I love it. Artistically, music-wise, it's tens across the board. I cannot fault Street Fighter 3. And that's less than I could say about the other games on this list. I think Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is the most perfect game on this list. I just like three other games slightly, slightly more. At number three, the number three game on my list. Oh, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it's it's 3.30 a.m. and I'm so tired and this is so hard. The number three best game of all time is Silent Hill 2. <laughs> oh my god, I can feel that one on my insides. It's just so hard and I'm, we've been streaming for five hours, five and a half hours, and I'm so- and the chat is going fucking insane! Okay, look, Silent Hill 2, um, my favorite story in any video game, of just profoundly upsetting, sad narrative just about, like, how loss fucking destroys you, and how grief leaves you just obliterated, you know, and just lost in yourself, and it does it all in a way a film never could, a book never could, and, like, you don't even fucking realize you're playing it. You don't know what's going on in that game until the very end, and the way it just changes everything is insane, you know, and it's, goddamn, it is such a fucking beautiful game. And, like, one of the biggest regrets I have is not talking about that ending in the video. Like, not dropping a spoiler warning and just going into it full ham. Like, in my original Silent Hill 2 video, which I made, like, years ago. And I think, to me, like, it's a game that deals with mental illness. It's a game that deals with just getting trapped in your own fucking reality and not being able to make your way out. And it's, like, it's devastating. And it's, it's beautiful. Like, it is a game about... Pain. It is a game about life handing you things you cannot handle, and I love it so much, and I love the performances so much, I love how it looks, it's just, it is an exceptionally beautiful game, and it would be 100% worthy of, you know, the game of the year, and it's only for these two other slightly better games, that letter reading, exactly, like, that letter reading, <sighs> So now the only question is what is the greatest game of all time? We have gone through a hundred games. We have we've gone through the Shadow Realm, we've gone through everything, and it's come down to just this. And so before we do, we're gonna count down every single game that's brought us to this point. Okay, I'm actually, you know what? I'm gonna do a poll. We're gonna do a poll and we're gonna look at the results in a little bit. Okay, if you guys go to the my Twitter and it's the announcement of this stream, there is now a poll and it's one vote and Final Fantasy VII is winning. In the meantime, we're gonna count down everything. Okay, starting in the dead zone, we have the Resident Evil 2 remake, Xenoblade Chronicles, Shovel Knight, Yakuza 7, Crash Bandicoot, Gaelic Games PS2, Mario Odyssey, Final Fantasy 15, and Shenmue 3. Those are the games that... Garbage. Just don't like them. Don't like them at all. Okay, people are saying they're still mad about Yakuza 7. So you know what? Chat... I'm going to take Yakuza, I'm going to do something unprecedented, and I'm going to take Yakuza 7 out of the dead zone. You have my word. Because what if there was a place below the dead zone? What if there was somewhere even worse than the dead zone? What if I left Yakuza 7 In the void of nothing. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you all get for disagreeing with me. <laughs> the void of nothing. The worst place imaginable. And that's where we will leave it forever. Okay. So in the Shadow Realm, a place of honor. Psychonauts, Nier Automata, Soul Reaver, Shenmue 1, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, World of Horror, Silent Hill, Shadow Memories, SSX Tricky, Dark Chronicle, Celeste, The King of Fighters 2000, Shadow of the Colossus, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, Harvest Moon, Lilat Wars, Celeste, River City Girls, Tekken Tag Tournament, Anodyne, Goldeneye, Day of the Tentacle, Metal Slug 3, uh, Thumper, Wario Lands, um, 
The Magical Quest starring Mickey Mouse, great game. Hyrule Warriors, Fury, Arkham Asylum, Haunting Ground, Tenchu, Wrath of Heaven, Into the Breach, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Evo, Search for Eden, Silent Hill 3, Sunset Riders, Buster Move, WrestleMania 2000, Choo Choo Rocket, Dragon Ball Z, Budokai Tenkaichi, Simon the Sorcerer, Muramasa and the Demon Blade, No More Heroes 2, Delta Ruin, Shantae and the Pirates Curse, Little Nightmares, Tiny Toons Adventures, Super Double Dragon, Joe and Mac, South Park, Stick of Truth, Let It Die. Okay. Number 100, Gone Home, 99, Blood Sin, Curse of the Moon, 98, Detention, 97, God Hand, 96, Deadly Premonition, 95, FTL, 94, Zombies Ate My Neighbors, 93, Metroid Prime, 92, If Found, 91, Fallout New Vegas, 90, Hades, 89, Mystical Ninja 64, 88, Dead or Alive 2 Ultimate, 87, Command and Conquer Red Alert 2, 86, Full Throttle, 85, Guilty Gear Revelator, um, 84, Hollow Knight, 83, Monster Hunter World, 82, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, 81, 1999, 80, Fire Emblem Awakening, 79, The Allura, 78, Deadly Premonition, 77, Killer 7, 76, Cave Story, 75, Hotline Miami, 74, Portal 2, um, 73, Goro Mark of the Wolves, 72, Banjo Kazooie, 71, Hyperlight Drifter, 70, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, 69, uh, Tony Hawk 3, 68, Asora's Wrath, 67, Bahamut Lagoon, 66, Persona 4 Golden, 65, Witch's House, 64, Spelunky 2, 63, Mega Man, 62, Dragon Quest 2, 61, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, 60, Duncan Rumpa 2, 59, Doki Doki Literature Club, 58, Yume Nikki, 57, Disgaea, 56, Pokemon Silver, 55, Binding of Isaac, 54, Phoenix Wright, uh, 53, Gunstar Heroes, 52, Bloodborne, uh, 51, Earthbound, 50, Cuphead, 49, Beautiful Joe, 48, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, 47, Chrono Trigger, 46, Super Mario World 3D, 45, Super Metroid, 44, Donkey Kong Country 2, 43, No More Heroes, 42, Dead, uh, The Walking Dead Season 1, 41, Super Punch-Out, 40, Streets of Rage 2, 39, Shenmue 2, 38, Toho 8, Imperishable Night, 37, Nier, 36, WWE No Mercy, 35, Guitar Man, 34, Resident Evil 4, 33, Half-Life, 32, Secret of Mana, 31, Super Smash Bros. Switch, 30, Resident Evil Remake, 35, Devil May Cry 5, 28, Bayonetta 2, 27, Street Fighter Alpha 3, 26, Tekken 5, 25, Legend Mystical Ninja, 24, Wind Waker, 23, Final Fantasy 6, 22, Dead Rising, 21, Mass Effect 2, 20, Majora's Mask, 19, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, 18, Pokemon Blue, 17, Super Mario World, 16, Virtua Fighter 4, Evolution, 15, Devotion, 14, Red Dead Redemption 2, 13, Lisa the Painful, 12, Super Mario 64, 11, Link to the Past, 10, Yakuza 0, 9, Metal Gear Solid 2, 8, Ocarina of Time, 7, Dark Souls, 6, Undertale, 5, Capcom vs SNK 2, 4, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, 3, Silent Hill 2, number 2, that's all to be decided. <laughs> Would I accept an, an impassioned argument for Shadow the Hedgehog? No. No, I would not. Okay. Let me pause the music here. Let's let the tension build. Before we do, look. Video game lists are stupid. Ranking lists is stupid. The whole purpose of this stream was basically just raise some money for a good cause. And I'm really super proud of everyone that we did that. I know I've made a lot of decisions to piss people off. I'm okay with that. But ultimately, I'm glad people enjoyed the stream, and I'm glad, you know, it provided a bit of levity for someone, and I'm really glad that I decided that to do it for, like, you know, um, the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention in particular. I was talking about this earlier in the stream, but 2020 fucking was a shit year. It was a shit year for everyone. I feel like I was one of the people least affected by it, but it still sucked for me, and I can't imagine how it was for other people. And, um, you know, as I said earlier... Part of why I wanted to do this stream is kind of like destigmatize in whatever little way I can the talk around kind of suicide and mental health and that kind of stuff because we still don't talk about that shit enough. Like we just don't. And we've gotten a lot of messages from people tonight talking about how, you know, they've been through their own shit and like it always helps to know that other people have. And like no one's alone in this. Like there is, other people do care. It's just not always obvious. And like if you are struggling, there are resources out there and no one should ever have to deal with that shit alone, ever. And, you know, if you are, it's not something you should have to take on board by yourself. Like, serious misery, depression, anxiety, that is not stuff that you should have to tolerate in your own life. And if you are, like, all I can say is just, like, you know, go get help. Like, there's absolutely a time when I was, like, depressed, like, 
so far beyond anything I'd ever dealt with. And I did go and I like, you know, I got therapy and I got help with it. And that was one of the best decisions I ever made, you know? And when I think about the amount of time I spent convincing myself it wasn't a good idea and it wasn't for me, in hindsight, that was so dumb. And I felt like it would have been a lot healthier for me to get it quicker, but I didn't. Um, and so if, you know, people take anything away from this is like, you know, don't be too proud. Like everyone needs help with shit. And if you are suffering, you don't need to be like, and you don't deserve that. And don't do that to yourself. I felt like that was worth saying in this really ridiculous stream about ranking which video games are better than other video games. And um, I've had a blast with this stream. I'm exhausted now, but this has been really fucking cool. And just, you know, really appreciate everyone who turned up. But we have one final decision to make here i'm gonna check the twitter poll out of 926 votes 55 percent for mother three final 45 percent for final fantasy 7 the chat is leaning mother three okay i think i've made a decision The number one best game of all time, according to me, is Raid Shadow Legends. Do you want an epic game that lets you that lets you gather all the loot you can? Are you eager to play with friends and uh, fight as an array of amazing characters? Then Raid Shadow Legends is the game for you. Available now on all free devices. Well, guys, that's gonna do it. Um, thanks everyone for joining my stream. Uh, I had a fun time. It's been, it's been good. It's, I think there was a lot of difficult decisions there. Um, but ultimately we did it. And, um, yeah, I had, I had a, I had a good time. Um, so I think, you know, that's going to do it for the stream. And, um, yeah, have a good night guys. Mother 3 is the number two game on this list. I love Mother 3. Mother 3 is a just fucking profoundly hilarious, sad, amazing game about what losing a family member can do to you. And I don't have it much in me to convey <laughs> why I think that game is so good, but I think... Um, it just shows, like, through this, like, really hilarious, quirky, beautiful world, it just shows you the dissolution of this family, and it's the most heartbreaking fucking thing. Um, there's another game on this list that made me fucking ball, and I love it, and I will never not love it for that. It breaks, like, the fourth wall in some really incredible ways, and I think it's just a masterpiece, complete masterpiece. There's only one other game I would put slightly above it, and that is Final Fantasy VII. If you want to know why this is my favorite game of all time, you can go watch my fucking 50-minute video for it, where I go into everything. But I think what I really love about Final Fantasy VII is through everything, it is a game that kind of just looks at you and just says you are enough. And I think that's something that we all need to hear every now and then and i don't feel a need to justify it any more than that um and guys that's gonna do it for this stream uh i really hope you all had a good time i did i'm like exhausted but it was like this was so much fun and i had a really really good time and we've been at this for six hours uh, it's currently nearly 4 a.m in ireland and i am going to go to bed I love you all, thank you for a beautiful stream, and I'll catch you guys next time.